Good morning, good morning. Welcome to my channel. I'm bringing to you today a hot stove press. Old school. For my heat protectant, if you look at my video before this one, you'll see my wash, my shampoo method that I have. Um, I hadn't changed anything besides shampoo and the conditioner and the products that I use. Um, but before I do a um, hot comb, I use the Boss Remy heat protectant. I spray that on my hair before I blow dry and then I blow dry my hair. Okay. Old school. Large combs. Oh, I had these combs so long. These are so old school. Yeah, it's like old school to the fullest. I about to say, see, this one was a little bit loose. I had to loose, uh, tighten that one up. So I had my towel here. Then I take them out and I set them on. I have a white towel paper towel that you take and you wipe off beforehand. So we're going to go through the whole heating process. I mean, um, my hair is freshly washed, well, freshly shampooed and blow dried. Let me get me a clip. Always start on fresh, clean hair. See it smoking? I'm gonna take that off of there. Put the white little one on. I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna part here. And I'm gonna clip. Always use the white paper because you get the tail if it's too hot. rub off and I just go they tell you three passes for the straight press however I've been doing this so long I'll do more than three passes so I like I want to make sure I um, press it out I use the um, large comb and the small comb Use the small one for the edges. And go into the next section. You take a small, you're supposed to take smaller sections, but my hair is good and um, they're not paying attention. Don't want to do that. Yes, I'm trying to turn around and talk at the same time. So, you want to pay attention because you can drop it because it is hot. But you remember, you got to be mindful that you're using a hot something hot. So, you don't want to try to reach and catch it. You let it fall and then you just get it from here. Okay? Yes, as I say, this is a thicker section. But actually, you're supposed to take like small sections. If you take small sections like this, it's easier to pass. But I'm not going to take no small sections. I'm just going on in just to show you the technique. I already have my um, heat protecting on my hair. I'm just go on in. And I'm doing this for myself, I go straight on through. When I'm doing it for someone else, I take smaller sections and I only do three passes. Because that's what you're supposed to do. Three passes will give you a nice straight. Because if you take smaller sections, but I'm taking larger sections, so I'm going to need a few more passes. You take your passes slow. Now, even when I did, just did three passes on that, I took it slow. And you see it still came out good and straight. Old school heat, heat press. 
always lasts longer than the flat iron. I can't tell you how long I have these combs. Oh my God, you wouldn't believe it. These combs that I have used to be my mom's when she used to do my hair. Back in the early 70s. That's how old these combs are. This has some usage on it. I won't even buy the newer combs out today. The hot combs. When I see the uh, newer hot combs, oh my God, they don't even feel like the same grade of material or construction. Like, I, I, I live by, I hold on to these as long as possible. I don't even upgrade. I just, <laughs> these my two. My big ones and my small ones. I use this for my edges. I use this one to come on through the hair. Hot, hot doing the hair. Hot doing the hair, Tara. Yes. Stove press. Stove press. And along with this comes the Marcel arms. Yes, I love the Marcel arms. I'm not big on the uh, flat arms, but I use them. So I use them both. And one thing for sure, two things are certain as a stylist. You need to be familiar with both the hot stove combs and the flat irons. Now, I mean, you shouldn't um, limit yourself to just one or the other. Because look at here. You know, back in the day, you used to travel to people's houses, do hair. Take your stove irons and your blow dryer, you good to go. Got your curl line. Doo -doo 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 -doo. You know what it is. Right now, this is just a press, a hot press. Doing it backwards so you can see me from the back. And your paper is just so, you know, you don't you have hair breakage. You want to make sure that you're wiping your paper off. Um, but I don't have no hair breakage. There's nothing burning on here. So that's why I haven't wiped it off. And when you're doing this for your client or someone, you definitely want to be paying attention because this is hot. But I always, from time to time, go back into pressing my hair with the... Uh, Flat on. You never lose your touch. I remember back in the day, I used to always press my sister's hair, my cousin's hair, my aunt's hair. They always used to all come over and get a hot press. Hot press and curl. Way before the relaxers. Way before the relaxers. Way before the relax. I mean, um, hot press and curls has been out for a long time. A little piece. Ooh, I hope this lighting is good. I'm going to take the video outside so you can see. I'm going to take the video outside so you can see. All right, come around to the front. Yes.
one side down. And start on the next side. I'm gonna turn around. I'm not gonna turn around this time. You saw me do that side, so I'm just gonna do the side forward facing. Mind you, this is done on a clean palette. I have no oil in my hair. That's why you don't ha hear no sizzling. Now, back in the day, woo, child, my mom used to do my hair. Mm. Child, she would wash my hair, shampoo your hair. Well, she shampooed my hair. Wash my hair, shampoo the hair. It's still the same thing. Try to use proper technical terms. But she would shampoo my hair. Then she would let it dry. She put these big old plaits in and let it dry. Because we didn't use blow dry back then. So you just walked around and let it air dry. So when it air dry, your hair was matted. Lord, was it matted. It brought back real shrinkage. I mean, shoot, back in the days, you had real, real true shrinkage. So, um, then she would sit me down and hot comb my hair. But, child, she used to put this royal crown. Child, grease my scalp, then hot comb my hair. Jesus, when I say sizzling and on fire. Girl, that was many days, many days. I was like, look at here. I'm going to learn how to do my own hair sooner or later. Because mama used to burn the crap out of me. And my hair was always straight pressed. But you don't put no oil in the hair while you're pressing it. Just use your heat protector. Um, because it's going to, like I just said, sizzly. Just like cooking grease. Put some grease up in there with the hot comb, you sizzling. Yes. Um, after you... Press your hair with the hot comb, and then you go ahead and grease your scalp. You'll see it'll be just nice and straight. I remember when my youngest daughter was little, her hair was so thick. Oh, my goodness. She has so much hair. Oh, my God. By the time she got five, I had to put a relaxer in because me and her just was not getting along. I used to sit down and give her a nice little hard press. She'll get her press once a month, a nice little hard press once a month. My hair was so thick and so long. Um, and she was so, and the thing about it is she was so tender headed. That's why I had to get her a relaxer. Because after a while, you know, you have to make the decision on when to give a child a relaxer. You, the parent, you know. Like, yes, you're not supposed to give a child a relaxer before they get their cycle. However, I know this, but for the child's sake and my sake, okay, that child, she needs a relaxer. Like I said, her hair was so thick and so it wasn't the point that it was thick and it was long and it was manageable because I can do it. It was the point that she was so tender headed. You know what I mean? So after a while, you sit up and say, when is enough enough? You know what I mean? Um, for the child. Because she didn't want to get her hair washed. She didn't want you to comb it. Whenever she knew she was getting ready to get her hair combed, she would hide underneath the bed for hours. She would hide all the combs in the house. Everything. Oh my God. It was just like trying to do this child hair was just like, oh my goodness. It was just like a whole, you had to map this thing out a week before because you know what you went through. You know what I mean? And then for the longest, I avoided trying to put a relaxer in her hair. You know what I mean? But it was the best thing for her. Like to each parent, to each their own. You know what I mean? When it comes down to your child. But when the kids are tender headed, you know what I mean? That's just straight torture when they have a lot of hair. Now, if your child's tender headed, they got a little bit of hair. You know what I mean? But it's thin. No, hers was thick, thick, good and thick, okay? And she had so much of it. So just trying to get through it, you know, make small little sections. You put all the detangler in. With five years, went through all the process of the detangler. It's like combing it out, wrapping it, you know, just doing everything. Just, you know, doing everything with your hand. Try not to use comb. You know, just doing everything you can to try to make sure the child wasn't in ache and pain when she got her hair done. And when she got five, got ready to go to kindergarten. You know you gotta get your hair done every day for school. So that's that's what that was it. Like that was that was it right there. I need to put that relaxer in her hair. And that was the best thing for her during her school years until she got old enough to handle and manage and deal with the point that she was so tender headed. Like she was always tender headed. 
It wasn't, you know, people say, oh, child, turn the hair, you don't do the hair. No, she got her hair done all the time. I always kept the braids in her hair. Every two weeks, she got her hair shampooed. She had her hair conditioning. She got her hair her ends clipped back then every other month. You know what I mean? So, uh, yes, it was just it was just straight. Whew. Yes, she just couldn't take it. She didn't, child, as soon as you sit up here and say it's time to get your hair done, that child cry all day, hide underneath the bed, child, hide the combs. Hide the brushes, hide all the hair balls, the barrettes. Child, please, you couldn't find nothing. That child, you had to literally start searching through the house. You know what I mean? So, like, look, I put that relaxing her hair. She was like, she was good to go. She was good to go. Had no problem. And that worked into, um, I believe, her not being so tender-headed. Because once I put the relaxer in her hair, now her hair became manageable. So, you know, when she sat down, got her hair done, and I combed it, you know, nice and soft and stuff. You know, she wasn't crying. She wasn't jumping all over. She was able to learn to deal. And as the years went on, she learned to, you know, get her hair done and sit, and it wasn't as bad. But back then, it was, um, by the time she got five, yes, when she got ready to go to kindergarten, that was it. Yes, and she needed a relaxer. Because there was no way I'm going to get up every day, you know, and try to make sure her hair looked like something before she walked out that door. Without her having a whole hissy fit crying, you know, um, like I said, um, relaxers came out. They made, they made relaxers for us because some people just can't take the, uh, the natural hair. Like this, uh, this right here, this is all natural. So yes, I went that, at, 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 like I said before, if you see my videos beforehand, I had cut all my hair all the way down. Um, and I just put all the relaxer out because I only got a relaxer for the wedding. Because uh, I was trying to start go back natural because, you know, when you get older, your hair gets thinner. So when you get the relaxer, it's just even thinner. You know, and it, and it, you only need one gene for the uh, your hair to be thinning for the thinning process. And I have it because my grandma had it, my dad had it, my mom has it on both sides of my family. So I have the gene. And I feel it as I get older, the hair getting thinner. So that's what made me start pulling away from relaxers. When I was younger, I had relaxers. My hair was thick, real thick, like my daughter's. Uh, but as I got older and learned how to manage my hair and things like that, you know what I mean? The relaxers was good, but I noticed how um, the older I get, my hair got thinner. Like, it's just it's just running the family. It's just a gene thing. It's in the gene. Like, before I did my hair, my hair was just freshly blow-dried. And you see, it was manageable then. You know what I mean? The only thing about relaxers is it keep it extra manageable because... You know, when it's hot outside, child, don't nobody got time for that shrivel. I don't care how much you press. That hair will uh, ravel at the roots. And that hairstyle look good for a minute. But then after that, it's all over. So, and I haven't pressed my hair in a minute. But I wanted to do a video on a hot comb press. So, I hope you like, subscribe, hit the like button. Don't come for me, girl. I'm just trying to do do me. Yes. Just trying to put a couple little talents, techniques out there um, for the future. Because this is this is where, I, you know, we have young girls going up today. And a lot of them don't know nothing about uh, hair. You know what I mean? So, just a nice little hot press. And this combs hold plenty of heat. So you don't have to really put it, keep putting it back on the stove over and over. But, because one thing about the hot press, comb holds the heat. Yes, the comb holds the heat. I'm definitely going to take this video outside because I feel like you ain't getting the natural, all the natural elements of the heat press. I'll take it outside so you can see it. This my little one. Let's come right here on my edges. When you rub down here, when you think the cone just a little bit too hot, that's what you, that's what you have your paper for.
Oh, that's me. You know how when you are uh, doing hair, honey? Yes, send them smoke detectors off. You be like, who in there burning hair? <laughs> yes. There you have it. Hot press. I'm going outside with the video so you can see it up close and personal. All right, here I go. Outside in the elements. Ain't no sun, so I can't get no sun. But you can see. Press. Here you go. Hot press. I hope you liked and enjoyed this video. Hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. I'll go up here and clip my ends. I haven't clipped in about six weeks, but they still look pretty good. But let me see when I go through them. Yes, there you have it. Hot press. And once I lay some grease on in there, you'll see it be even straighter. Thank you for watching. All right, I just wanted to show you. I added some hair grease. I'm just using some bergamot hair grease. I added some already, but I wanted to come on camera and show you. I just add the hair grease to the hair. Make sure you get it on the ends. Yes. And take the brush. I ain't doing nothing fancy. Let's put some oil on it. I combed it and brushed it. Give me a little swoop right here for the front. And there you have it. Old school hot press. Wanted to come outside and some added light. Old school hot press. Trying to get some of the outside element. There you go. Only thing I did is add some hair grease and brushed it and combed it, as you see. Old school hot press. And you know, you go from here, which you lay your edges down, you know, put in a point tail, add a bun. But I just wanted to put that video out there. Hope you like it. Comment and subscribe. Some more lighting. So you can see. Pull up. Yep, so I'm back in the house.
go outside with those. Gotta have that mask on when you go outside. Don't be playing.